Hello and welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James, and unfortunately you don't have Stephen George. Stephen is off doing his daddy bit today, so good luck Stephen with that. I'm sure we'll have him next week, he can tell us all about it. Good evening, it's Sunday the 10th of May 2015, and uh, we're going to have three guests on the show today. The plan of attack is to have three guests we are, we have Detlev online at the moment. We're hoping to have, um, that's Detlev from Wake News Radio over in Switzerland. And we're hoping to have Gary Hendershot from Wide Awake News and hopefully Vinnie Eastwood from the Vinnie Eastwood Show. That's the plan of attack. The problem is when you're dealing with time zones and everything else, sometimes it goes out with kilter, especially with the British summertime hour and everything else. So hopefully during the show they'll be giving us sh- a shout and we'll get them, we'll get them online and we'll get them in. We also might have JP from Wolf Spirit Radio as well. We might get uh, JP in as well if he's available and um, have a chat with JP. And what we're doing is we're just going to catch up on things that are happening during, um, during, during the, the year, during the last few years and globally what's going on today. That's really the plan of attack. But before that, let's find out what the communication channels are. The communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046-927-1212 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room. Right, now the Studio One is actually set up for two people, so I'm all hands uh, tonight on the show. We have the chat room, the OAM chat room. Hopefully it's going to be a bit faster tonight, fingers crossed. We do have our internet service provider monitoring the website to see what's going on speed-wise. And basically, um, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's a little bit faster. We made a few code changes to the actual chat facility. And we're going to be on uh, people's internet radio chat as well. You can phone in on 046 927 1212. I'm going to try run everything. As I say, the studio is designed for two people and not, uh, and not one. So I'll have to grow another pair of arms, but we'll, uh, we'll work on that. Now, before we get down and uh, bring in our guest, there's a couple of things that we, uh, I want to have a chat about. Anyway, things that are going on. As usual, we have a chat about. Now, the United We Strike Radio Marathon was on yesterday. So if you pop over to unitedwestrike.com, you'll find all the podcasts there from the show. Again, great set of guests, great show, uh, great information there. You'll find all the pods there, so pop over there. The other thing that's uh, going to be happening tomorrow is that uh, there's a big day in Mullingar Court tomorrow, I've just been told today. Ben Gilroy is going to be in there. He's going to be representing somebody. He's going to be speaking on their behalf. So it'll be, um, it'll be, if anybody can get down to Mullingar, it'll be actually, uh, great to see, um, to see, uh, see what goes on and see what way the register, um, is, uh, is dealt with. Um, we just have, uh, JP has just agreed to come on the show as well there. So, um, oh, okay. J- hi JP. I'll be just with you in a few minutes, JP, if you can just bear with me there for a minute. Yeah, I'll mute out. Okay, no problem. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, so Ben's going to be down in Mullingar Court. So we're going to pop down and see Ben and see what goes on there. Also, Trim Court is going to be on tomorrow. I'm going to try and get down to Trim Court with a few of the people from the National Land League and the Hub. And I believe Cavan is on as well. So you need to pop down to Cavan as well. If you have any uh, support, um, just pop down. I'll see what's going on. Lend some support if you can. That's, that'll be fantastic. <coughs> now, we're going to, um, during the week, I was uh, having a chat on Facebook with a couple of people, and this lady said to me, "This is what ha- this happened to her two years ago." And I said to her, "I would read this story out." Her name's Anya, and it's just shocking the way the Gardaí are treating people. Um, she said that Anya and her partner had to travel to Dublin one morning, and on the way back, she took the wrong turn because she wasn't familiar with the roads, and she took a right-hand turn where you couldn't take a right-hand turn. Unfortunately, other cars did the same thing, but it was her car that got picked on and pulled in by the police. Now, at the time, she didn't have any car tax on the car um, because she didn't have the money. Like most people, you you don't have the money. Now, she was heavily pregnant, about eight months pregnant, apparently. And um, so the guards pulled her over, and she didn't even get a chance to explain to the guard about the situation. Um, lucky enough she was only about five minutes away from the train station 
But the, the fact that the guards didn't turn around and say, right, I'll let you off this time or I'm going to give you a fine as you're pregnant. No, that's too logical for the guards. So they actually went and took the actual car off her and left her stranded there. I mean, as I say, lucky she was near the train station, but the woman was eight months pregnant. I mean, it, it just seems the guard do, do not have any empathy. And she asked him, she said, do you, do you not feel guilty of what you're doing? And of course, what do they normally say? I'm only doing my job. The same way the Romans were. They probably said the same thing when they were nailing Jesus to the cross. I'm only doing my job, you know. And um, it's just unbelievable that, uh, I mean, it's bad enough having all the stress for finances and everything else. But to be left stranded and the car taken off you. So, I was kind of, I was kind of looking into this. And there was a chap up in Donegal who actually got his case thrown out. And apparently the guards legally are not allowed to do this. Now, I'd like to get some clarification on this if possible. But apparently the fact that we're actually in in Europe, uh, one thing is you have to consent. The second thing is, is that they cannot take something that has a higher value than the debt outstanding. And three, there is another thing got to do with the Treaty of Rome, which says that you can't do it. So if you if you have any information on this, email it into us info at OAM Radio, and let us know, um, we and we can clarify this because I think people really need to know about this that they can't go and take your car off you. You you know, like we had Harry on the show, and Harry told us about the incident he had with the motorboy cop who pulled him over. And Harry said, well, this van sustains me on the planet, so you're not getting it. I'm not consenting. You're stepping outside your dur- jurisdiction. And um, the motorbike cop obviously couldn't take the van. And Harry gave him his library card or something so he could write a piece of paper. And that was sent out in the post. And Harry put a return to sender sticker and sent it back in the post to them. So if you have any information on this, I think this is important. People need to know this. That the guards can't do this. And then if they do do it. Make sure you get the guards details. And take out a private prosecution. That's the only thing. That's the only way they're going to learn. Is if something like that. If we do something like that. Um, maybe Detlev might know. Or maybe JP might know about this. I don't know if they've come across this. But we'll bring them in uh, in a minute. Now as I say. We don't have Steve. So Alan's and, Alan's and Steve's week. Is going to be very very short. Um, well there's nothing much on it really. But just to say that. Um, we have Trim Court in the morning. If anybody can de- get down, pop down to Trim, Cabin or Mullingar. And tomorrow night in Kells County Mead in the Headford Arms, Vincent Brown is going to be doing the People's Debate. Do you know the show he's doing that's all around the country? Well, he's doing that tomorrow in the Headford Arms in Kells. It starts at 7 o'clock and I'm aiming to be down there as well with a few people from the National Land League. So if you can get down there and show some support, that would be brilliant to see you down there. Um, it does start at 7. Parking is free after 6 o'clock in Kells. So you can park up and cross over. You'll n- also, uh, you can get the coach from Dublin into Kells as well, from Bazaris or from Dublin Airport, if you're around that way. So um, if you're there, it would be good to see you. We'll be sitting around, we'll be in the audience. That's the, that's the plan. Right, without further ado, I'm going to bring in our two guests. Uh, good evening, Detlev and JP. How are you doing? Hi, Alan. How are you? Hi, JP. How are you? He's muted, possibly. Okay, <laughs> he's probably popped the loo. JP, are you there? No, I didn't. I didn't have my microphone. Um, uh, I had my microphone muted. Uh, <laughs> all right, so, all right, so, JP. Hey, how are you? It's good to hear <laughs> you, Detlev. Yeah, hi, how are A you? A free man. Once again. We, again. We, we are going to get to that situation where Detlev was arrested. We're going to talk about that. But just to explain to the listeners that um, the idea of this kind of... It's a bit of a round table where we're going to be just talking about the global issues and things that are going on and things that have been said. As you say, um, Gary and Vin are not online yet, but as soon as they come on, I will drag them into the show. Fingers crossed they, they come online and we'll bring them in. And then we'll, uh, we'll con- continue on the chat from where we left off. But the first thing is, uh, we'll go over to you, Detlev, first. Um, because last week, you were arrested. And the video, I, I posted the video up on our Facebook page to let everybody know. And we've seen the footage. And I know you said it was a traffic misdemeanor or something simple with an unpaid ticket. But there seemed to be an awful lot of police around you for an unpaid ticket. Tell us what happened. Well... 
Um, it happened April 27th. Very true. Uh, it was not an unpaid ticket. I never pay uh, any tickets anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because uh, are you paying to any corporation or company you are not really having any contract with? Well, this well that's is, another issue. That's the issue that we have with Irish water in Ireland at the moment. Yeah. You know, yes. so. Well, that's, that's worldwide. I mean, there are no more sovereign states around. Uh, we all have discovered this, um, at least, uh, you know, of those I know. The major ones are all corporations. And also the institutions inside, um, the official uh, institutions also are corporations. Uh, whether it's a court or whether it's, uh, you know, a prosecutor uh, office, they are all corporations. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even states within a nation or something like this uh, are also corporations. At least uh, in the area where I'm uh, reporting on, ma mainly that's the German part, that's Austria, Germany and uh, Switzerland. That's the case. It's, also, it's the same thing in Belgium. In Belgium, every um, um, you know institution, official institution, is a corporation as well. Okay, never mind. Um, I am a free journalist, and I'm um, basically speaking out what I see. I'm looking for the truth, right? Okay. So on April 27th, I announced to be present in a very small village, uh, not far away from Switzerland, on the on the other side of the border. Uh, in the Federal Republic of Germany, we shouldn't say Germany, really, because we're talking about a non-governmental organization called Federal Republic of Germany. Okay, but that's another issue I'll explain if uh, we have time. Now, uh, I announced my coming because there was a, a chap, um, uh, and they actually want a piece of his land, right? Um, and they claimed... Unlawfully, uh, it is theirs, um, but it isn't. And uh, we wanted to report on this, um, and we've been uh, reporting on those kind of issues uh, uh, quite some time now. The land grab is on uh, on the move uh, right. everywhere. Yeah. It's Ag Agenda 21, everybody knows. So they want to basically um, yeah, uh, make you all poor, or make us all poor, so we are um, no longer independent, right? Especially uh, farmers uh, are being uh, targeted. So and I was reporting on those issues uh, since, you know, 2010. <laughs> so they know me well. Um, and as I usually announce my work, because I always also send in um, press uh, information and uh, press uh, um, data to give them the chance uh, to respond to my questions uh, before I release any of my reports. So I sent in to the mayor of the small village um, uh, about a week before that um, a request to answer my press questions, my journalist questions, no reply. So um, I also invited quite a few other people to join in as uh, witnesses, as uh, free journalists as well, to take pictures and film it, uh, you know, on video. And, uh, yeah, and I could only come a couple of hours later, um, you know, because I was busy on another job. So when I arrived with my car at the specific uh, place, um I saw a huge amount of uh, of people, uh, especially also um, weapon, weaponized, uniformed um, gents and ladies. No, no, no ladies this time. Uh, only gents. I never call them police because police is a trademark in uh, the Federal Republic of Germany, so it is reserved to um, an institution called um, Bavaria. Bavaria is a, is a small, it's also a state within the Federal Republic of Germany, and they have registered the brand name Polis, uh, Polizei in German, right? Uh, to, um, you know, the, um, to the, the, the trademark office there, the agency. 
So basically everybody who is uh, wearing, um, you know, textiles or uh, anything where polizei or police, as you would call it in English, is written on, is a trademark, right? Okay. So they cannot prove they are uh, state officials, you know. They don't have, uh, they just have a, uh, if they show you any ID cards, uh, that's uh, an ID card any uh, um, corporation could issue to their employees, right? Okay. All right, so uh, to make a long story short, I arrived with my car and I wasn't even uh, able to park my car. They uh, stopped me in the middle of the road. They have actually, uh, you know, uh, closed the road. So uh, I, they they came with six, um, you know, weaponized uh, uniformed uh, gents uh, and asked me for my papers. And I said, I'm not a person. So I will not show you any documentation or any papers, yeah? Yeah. Because I'm I'm a human, right? That's my usual uh, reply. So they and also I said and also I don't need to do that because everybody knows me here, okay? Yeah. So I'm a public figure already in this area. And they didn't uh, really insist on my papers <laughs> because they knew me as well. Okay. Because they they usually sh- uh, show my films in the in their um um in their um, um, stages which they do uh, to prepare for the work, right? So in their universities and so forth, they show my films because uh, they most probably say. Listen, this is uh, somebody who is uh, trying to uh, expose us and, uh, and and so on and so forth. Because okay. I I always tell them the law. <laughs> okay, you you tell them the law. the law. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we have the same over here. We have the yeah. guardy who are the police. They have six months of training and they come out thinking they're Judge Judy. You know. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's the same thing everywhere. You know, they are just, uh, you know, persons. So they are not really um, uh, state officials. They believe that, or they may like to believe that, but it's not true. Okay, so they uh, arrested me, um, put me in handcuffs, and uh, carried me away. So I wasn't able to um, to uh, end my uh, report there, and they basically tried to get me into one of the prisons around. And the next prison uh, refused to take me because they already have damage claims from me over millions, right? So okay. they refused to take me. So they carried me away to uh, to another one, to Freiburg. Um, that's about 60 kilometers away from from the place I was arrested. Yeah, and everybody I met, I told them, uh, if you are... Um, damaging my basic rights and human rights, you will be uh, sued for 20 million euros each, right? Yeah, okay. And I also have this on, on paper and so forth. It's, it's on my website and every, everything. And I tell them, you want this, you uh, comply with that, or you don't. And they usually don't say anything, so they are they comply. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which we always say to people that if you don't say if if you don't say no, the answer must be yes. Right. So and also I also uh, reply uh, or do this afterwards in uh, in in a written form as uh, you know, so everything is in 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 um, in order. Yeah. So they uh, put me there in jail, and also in the jail uh, they. Um, um, they needed 12 people. You know, I'm just, a, you know, I'm, I'm a very peaceful person. Oh, no, human, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Uh, so they needed 12 people to, uh, you know, surround me in, in the prison in Freiburg. And they, um, yeah, they forced me to undress. Um, I did this because I didn't want to be any... I didn't want to have any harm, you know, made to me. Okay. So I undressed completely naked, and I told them, "Oh, you like my body, huh? You <laughs> like ah, you like that, huh? Are you, uh, you know, uh, someone who likes the same uh, sex? Hmm? Mm. <laughs> Things like that. Okay. And uh, you know, I even opened one of my cheeks and said, "Huh? You would like to see that, huh? 
ah, how nice, isn't it? <laughs> no, so I made a little fun of them. Okay. And um, yeah, I um, collected damages of 220 million euros uh, during this uh, happening there. And um, yeah, so, you know, I stayed in there for three days. Three I days? Yeah, I didn't take anything to me, no drinks, no food. So I declared this, and the first thing I did um, wrote down four pages of uh, declaration because I'm also, you know, they have uh, damaged my sovereignty because I am a sovereign German because I have declared myself um, an independent state um, according to UN resolution A RES. Um, 56-83, Article 9. If there is uh, no real state functioning, functioning and you cannot use this uh, for being, uh, you know, governed, then you can declare your, your own uh, independence, your own uh, state self-government. Okay, and I've done this in 2011 because the Federal Republic of Germany is not a state, it's not a sovereign state, it is not the Germany which surrendered by the way, uh, May um, 7th or 8th, rather. You are familiar with that, the V-Day, uh, okay. which is taking place everywhere at the it, moment. Yeah, but it's, yeah. this is also not the right uh, and correct uh, definition because it's not Germany which surrendered. It was only the German Wehrmacht, so the military, okay. who surrendered because we are still um, at war. So there's not uh, there's no peace treaty. No. And the the so-called peace treaties with Japan and Austria and Italy are not real peace treaties if you if you go through them. So we are still at war, and that's why everybody is uh, you know <laughs> showing off with their guns and weapons and military equipment and uh, airplanes and uh, navy and so forth. Still uh, you know at war everywhere in the world. Well, we're going to be talking about that because, um, and I want to bring JP in uh, as well on this, uh, the next question, because globally, you know, we as radio hosts, we interview an awful lot of people and we've spoken to an awful lot of people. And um, I, I know this is kind of a very American, but we do hear an awful lot about what's happening in the States. Um, we hear it, JP, we, we get UK news, we know what's going on over there, and you probably don't get Irish news. Over here we have protests uh, regarding Irish water, they want to privatise it, like around the world they want to do that. But yeah, the inf- yeah, I'm aware of that. Yeah, so the information that, uh, and I'll get your take on this and then I'll ask Detlev, um, it's basically got to do with you know, what's coming up, what's coming down the line, and what the elites are doing. Now, in the last few days, if not the last couple of weeks, We've learned that the New York Fed is moving a lot of operations to Chicago because of concerns about a natural disaster. Now also, um, the federal government is buying, uh, has bought 62 million rounds of ammunition commonly used in AR-15 semi-automatic rifles for training purposes. And NORAD is moving back to Cheyenne Mountain because it is EMP hardened. In addition, government authorities have scheduled a whole host of unusual training exercises all over the states called Jade Helm. Um, so we're just wondering what the elite are doing. Are they planning something big, or is there something coming down the line that we not, not aware, that we are not aware of? What have you heard, JP? Right. Okay. So there's there's lots of lots of lots of uh, stuff there. First of all, um, uh, my take on Jade Helm is that it's it's a training exercise for the computer program that is called Jade. Yeah, J A D E stands for it's it's a it's a, a piece of software. It's like uh, Access or um, Excel, you know. Okay. It's it's a piece of software, and it's a uh, deployment planning software. So that's why they're having they're planning all the they're, you know they're deploying large amounts of things so that this piece of software can organize uh, events that are planned by the AI, right? Because okay. the AI is the thing that's in charge of everything. You know, everybody, everybody. <laughs> that's the, that's the thing. It's the you know what what do we call it the matrix or uh, there is an artificial intelligence that is is moving things into place, and it's had access to uh, future predictions and it's 
there's you know it's it's now got the web bot so it's it's now able to look into the future and, and plan around us it's very it's very tricky anyway very um but uh, as far as jade helm's concerned it's a um it's just to see if what the program thinks actually can f- can work out onto the ground you know cuz computer programs can you know <laughs> you've got a gps but you I've I've been on a GPS where I tried to drive from Scotland to London, and and apparently according to the GPS, we 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 were driving through a field. <laughs> it's like we were plowing through a field. We we're actually going down a brand new road. Yeah. You know? Um. So this is the sort of thing, you know, the sort of bugs that it needs to, needs to iron out, and so they have have to play these things out. Um. I think it's also got the added advantage of like it's putting lots of military hardware onto the streets. And it's scaring the crap out of people. The Americans are, are, are completely scared to death all the time, all the time of Muslims, of this and that, and you know everything. Well, it's not the whole Terrified. idea. It, it's it, part, it, that's part of the mind control. Yeah, that's the mind control to keep people in fear, to keep them paranoid. Yes, indeed. I mean, it's it's all uh, it's it's propaganda, and it's it's like it's you know McCarthyism. Oh, red's under the beds. You know, you've got to be scared of the communists. Uh, we're friends with the communists now. What's going on? You know, we used to be enemies of Ireland. You know, you guys used to bomb Britain. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I remember when I was a kid, you know, oh, it's the IRA. You know, and, and the other thing is this constant droning on in the news. In the, 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 the whole song, you know, the death song. Uh, 23 people were killed. It's always 23, by the way. Um, they were killed. Da, 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 da. Depressed, depressed, depressed. Oh, and finally, here's a little thing. This is what makes it makes the news watchable, you know. And and so everybody walks around with this doom and gloom. And I just want to bring in this last uh, election. We had a, a, a general election in Britain, which was uh, really a call. We uh, shouldn't call it a general selection because uh, basically Cameron, um, who's the Bullingdon boy. And all the prime ministers come out of Bullingdon Club and they have a very specific MO, modus operandi, of doing their thing. The thing that the Bullingdon Club do is uh, essentially what we used to call in London um, insurance jobs, um, which is basically they would go to a, a restaurant, they would crash the place, uh, they'd start a fight um, and uh, destroy everything in it and then throw loads of money, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds cash at the restaurant owner. Uh, and then run away. Um, and, uh, the, you know, there was plenty enough to fix the restaurant up, plus a bit more, so he's not complaining, uh, and they never complained, and this is what happens in Oxford. So if you want to run a business, you can... Um, oh, oh, by the way, what they do beforehand is to uh, take out an insurance policy uh, on the restaurant so that if it gets uh, broken up, they get more than the thousands of pounds that they, they were throwing at the man. And so you see, everybody, it's a, it's a scam, it's a game, and it, everybody wins. Now, if you then scale that up, you get to things like the Titanic disaster, and Bhopal, and 9-11, and just about every other false flag. There's an insurance bond that is attached to it, and that's where the money goes. Um, and, uh, for instance, the 9-11 insurance bond came from the pension funds of the firemen and the policemen pitted against each other. Wow. Uh, because, uh, and, and this is, you know, it, it's, it's a lot about money. It's a lot about gold. Of course, there was the 911, um, the 910, um, a declaration that there's money missing. $2.3 trillion went missing the day before that was announced. Remember GHW Bush announced yeah. that? And then, um, and then the day after, the 12th, was the day that the uh, Fed, Federal Reserve was due to return gold to the Chinese that uh, the Chinese had sued them in the, in the international court for, for because it was gold that was taken over in the 1930s for a supposed safekeeping. But essentially it was melted down and used for, um, you know, uh, g- giving to Marduk or someone. Anyway, long story. It's all long stories, but they're all... Um, it's all about uh, getting Cameron, um, who is a completely ineffective twat. You know, he just he's just a head. He's just a talking head um, and uh, has uh, all these people behind him. You know, you've got your Peter, Mandel, Peter Mandelsons of the world, whoever mm. it is this day, th- these days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ah, right. OK, so I've also been um, 
have, have I tidied that one up? Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. Go, I'll go to that level. But you tell us what you've been up to. Uh, but the the other thing is that I've been up to is uh, is I've been researching um, Nazi time travel technology. Oh, that's the uh, the bell, isn't it? The bell, the Glock. Yeah, yeah. I bought um, a book online and I read it out. So you can download it from my website um, because I read it out on the radio for everybody. And it's a very exciting story, and it's the backstory of the bell uh, told by one of the Nazi scientists who became one of the paperclip scientists. That's why he survived and how the book got out. And it was published uh, only in 2012, um, and it told the story uh, of how they built the Glock and what it was for. And here's the thing. I just want to nutshell it for you. The bell was actually a vortex generator which created a wormhole, right? It's like a stargate. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, it would go up into the air, it would levitate, and it would um, crank itself up, glow blue, and then eerie green mist would appear, and then foof, it would, you, there would then be a wormhole created. Um, and uh, the, um, the idea of it was part of the uh, Wunderwaffe. Now, I don't know what you guys know about the... the, the but basically, the Germans had some... The, had some uh, destructive technology that could that were like neutron bombs. There was a red mercury bomb, um, a, um, a an atom bomb, um, a uh, there's a zombie bomb. Something that turned people into zombies. I mean, like no kidding. They had radiation that that, that could zombify people, um, and uh, it was horrific, really horrific. And uh, what they were going to do was deliver that to Washington. Via, via this wormhole. So would, they would crank up the wormhole and then they would chuck this bomb through it and it would deliver in an uh, instant without any warning at all a highly destructive weapon. And that was the Wunderwaffe and they were one month away from deploying it. Now the Brits thought that it was six months away from it but they were actually one month away. Anyway, there's, a, there's an exciting story. So um, Delev, whereabouts do you live? Well, I live here in Basel in Switzerland. That's yep. uh, exactly on the border to Germany or the current uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, federal what we know is Germany. Yeah, <laughs> 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 let's just call it Germany. Yeah, but, yeah. We we get you that it's a it's a corporation like everything else. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, oh, so, okay. Uh, well, let's. I, go, I'm going to. I'm okay, going to. Let Delif. Uh, he's, yeah. he's got something to say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well. I live here in Basel, and Basel is the center of uh, the Rothschild banking system called the Bank of International Settlement. So that's exactly here where I live, and it's also a center um, of the Zionists, right? Because the Zionism was created here in Basel. <laughs> yeah, they set it up here in Basel. Um, and uh, from, uh, uh, Mr. Herzl actually did this, and he was definitely working for the Rothschilds as well. And um, also, you know, everybody else in the world is also working for the Rothschilds. You know, the Federal Republic of Germany was created in a villa of the Rothschilds close to Frankfurt. Also, uh, an information which is not well, very well known around the world. So, it's all a Rothschild's world. Uh, we understand that there's uh, something more behind Rothschild's as well, but, you know, let's not get into this because that's, uh, you know, how, Alan, how many hours are you planning on having us on? Um, well, Gary's just come online, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to bring Gary in, but what I want to do is really talk about, focus on the, what's happening now and what they're all, what all the predictions are because, um, at the moment, there's an awful lot going on globally, and everybody has their opinion on what's going on. And so, with the fact that all of us are radio hosts and we speak to an awful lot of people, the idea is to kind of get your opinion based on all the guests that you've interviewed, what you think is going on. I mean, the one big thing that's happening at the moment, or they're talking about, September seems to be a very poignant date. Now, I don't like focusing on certain dates because dates have come and gone you know it all does an asteroid come and you know on friday and you know all that kind of stuff but there seems to be an awful lot um pointing to this september for some reason you know they're talking about the blood moon and it's a super smita and you have the um the french foreign minister and the uh john kerry talking about the 500 days to avoid climate chaos so what i'm trying to what i want to try and fit in is 
everybody's opinion on what they feel is going on. Because of the Jade Helm and because of the Fed Reserve moving, um, the Cheyenne Mountain open up to the EMP. That's really what I want to try and get on the show today, if we can, if we can do that. All right, I've got sure. some stuff. I've got some stuff. Okay, right. well, well... Number one. Go okay, on. well, let me just bring Gary in, because uh, I right, just brought Gary. Gary in there. Uh, good evening, Gary. How are you doing? Okay, now I think I'm unmuted. Uh, doing well. Sorry, I'm a, a little bit late. I I'm, I was calculating uh, time zones on my on my fingers and toes, and I I, I think I I miscalculated. I I didn't I didn't think you want to be until uh, about thirty minutes from now. But yeah. I'm happy to be here. That's okay. Thanks for jumping in, Gary. Much appreciated. Um, the general idea is just a round table, and we're going to be as you probably heard me saying there, just because we interview so many people on on our on our radio shows. It's good to get, because you're in the States, JP's in Scotland, Det lives in Switzerland, hopefully we'll have Vinny in. Vinny is, um, it's probably about uh, 25 to 8 in the morning where Vinny is at the moment. So we get Vinny in, we have a kind of fairly good coverage of radio hosts globally. And just to kind of talk about what's going on, because we seem to be, I don't know whether you guys feel it, but we're getting to kind of, this kind of peak. I don't know, I just feel this kind of, you know, there's an energy just things going on and oh. um and i just want to kind of you know get your take on it you know are we going mad or are you hearing it are you feeling it and all that kind of stuff so um i'll just go to detlev there for a minute gary because we were just getting stuck into that topic so detlev you interviewed dr joseph chip alone so you know his thinking and you've know you know the other bits and pieces that i've just mentioned there what's your take on that yeah thanks hi gary by the way yeah, um, well, I'm, um, I'm not yet really uh, sure whether everything will happen like Dr. Schapelona is talking about it. But, um, you know, in Switzerland, there's the CERN uh, apparatus, if you are familiar with this. I mean, you are, but the audience as well. And we do have regular headaches over here. So they are really building up a huge magnetic uh wave if you want to a magnetic power which you can feel because they're using uh, energy uh, each day uh, which the whole of switzerland is consuming just for running this operation and uh, we also know this is a uh, 600,000 times that's what they say i don't know whether this is true i have no proof to <laughs> to to really confirm this but they they say it's it's uh, it's an it's it's a magnetic field they they are setting up which is 600,000 times higher than the earth's magnetic field if that can only be right i don't know but that's what they say and we also know that they are trying we we talked about this was um, uh, JP early on uh, to create something which is very worrying, isn't it? Uh, I mean, like uh, like the Germans possibly did during the Third Reich to fight a uh, Wunderbar, uh, something which is uh, creating a new uh, dimension or gives us the entry into a new dimension or changes things like uh, we used to to see that. It's also the idea that uh, the Earth might not be around, as they try to tell us, but the Earth is flat. You know, that <laughs> there are many, many speculations on that. Yeah. And many people are trying to prove this, which is definitely not an easy one, because you have to be out of Earth in order to see what the Earth looks like, right? And we usually don't do that, do we? <laughs> None of us do. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting, I mean, you know, we are going to be looking at getting a guest on, to talk about this and why he he feels the earth is flat it's a good kind of topic of conversation as long as you don't get into an argument over it but it's you know let's put it out there i mean open your mind is that's what open your mind is all about to contemplate things it doesn't mean you have to believe it but just to be able to kind of talk about what if you know Sure, absolutely, and uh, I'm pretty worried because Switz. I mean, you you, you are familiar with the Deagle dot com uh, website. They they were predicting numbers and uh, you know developments into 2025, and they collect the information from all kind of sources, public sources, military sources, and so forth. And some of the countries are. Uh, being reduced in terms of population. I mean, you know, Switzerland is supposed to be uh, only um, a third of what it is now. So that is quite worrying. Also, the United States uh, 
shows a decline of about 250 million. <laughs> Shouldn't we be a little bit worried about that? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are if you're not familiar with those figures, you should have a look into that. Deagle.com is uh, uh, D E A G E L dot com. So it's one of those um, um, research and anal- an- analysis anal- analytic sites. Sorry. Um, okay. My English is a little Swiss from now on. That's okay. okay. Well, <laughs> you, your English is much better than my German. Put it that way. Um, okay, listen, uh, we'll, uh, we'll just get, bring Gary in there. Gary, obviously you're over in the States. You're seeing an awful lot going on. And everybody, um, JP was just talking about, uh, Jade Helm and, uh, his opinion on what he feels it is. And, uh, so what's your take over there on what's going on? Because I know also, I seen a video there the other day and this lady was making a list of all these stores. All these stores are shutting down either shutting down completely or shutting down an awful lot of their stores. And there was a massive list, you know, the likes of the Walmarts and the Targets and all these sh- stores are closing down. So what's your take on, on what's going on over there, Gary? Well, are we are we talking specifically about Jade Helm? I mean, uh, Just, the, the, the fact of the matter is the American military does these practice exercises all the time, and they and they have done these practice exercises ever since World War II. Now, what happened this time is that uh, somebody got a hold of uh, frankly I think it's a big psyop uh, you know they 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 have one of these exercises every year now I will grant you that uh the one they're pulling off this year is uh is a little bigger and more involved than what they've done previously um, but it's a very similar exercise to what they've done previously um it's one of these things where they're they're practicing for America's invaded and the Chinese have uh, have taken over the American government. Uh, how do all the what do, how do all the special forces respond? Well, they're they're going to become a uh, a, a guerrilla force. They're going to go to ground and they're going to have to blend in with the uh, uh, with the folks out in the country. And then at night they're supposed to you know put on their camo and and go out and and, and take their revenge. Um, and and that's what they're practicing. Uh, I think the psyop is to use. I mean, it was going to. This thing was going to go down, whether we liked it or not, whether we knew about it or not. <laughs> Typically, these things aren't advertised and promoted. You know, the, the military does have a right to maintain a certain level of security on such things. But uh, I think the psyop was that they released the information just to see how the public would react to something that's been going on. Ever since World War II, anyway. That's my take on Jade Helm. Okay, and what about everything else that's going on? The likes of the Fed moving, the likes of Cheyenne Mountain being opened up again, um, and uh, all the stores closing, and the well, DHS. We're getting, ready to, we're getting ready to go to war with, with Russia, um, so they need Cheyenne Mountain put back together again. I mean, let's face it. Um, uh, the, the European central bankers and the, and the U.S. Federal Reserve did not get everything they paid for in Ukraine, and they're really pissed off. I mean, they paid darn good money for all of Ukraine, not just this one little impoverished section. They want Crimea, they want Crimea, they want the, uh, uh, the coal mines in, uh, uh, in, in eastern Ukraine. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they paid for that, and they didn't get it, and they're pissed. So you know they're 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 basically um, uh, smacking Putin around uh, every chance they get, uh, just trying to goad him into to making a move that would justify a uh, uh, a, a shooting war. Uh, now, if you're going to go into a shooting war with uh, with somebody as strong as Russia, uh, to make sure that the um, uh, you know the the powers that be can survive such a thing. Uh, you need to have some safe places to stash them. I mean, they don't care about us. I mean, if you know, if, if we get vaporized in, uh, in, a, in a nuclear uh, blast, you know, they, they don't care about us as long as they've got a safe place to go. And, and Cheyenne Mountain is a very, very nice uh, uh, facility uh, for somebody who wants to be in a, in a really deep hole for a, a fairly long period of time. Okay, so the World War Three option is still on the cards. Is that not an excuse 
to because of the massive debt that's in the world at the moment that will never get paid and the bankers know that their their time is up we we everybody is kind of catching on to what's going on they need world war 3 to kind of you know um well, press press the reset button uh, yeah that's, that's that that is the traditional mechanism uh for having a reset and it's it's great for the central bankers because you know they they get to lend money to both sides. They'll lend money to Russia, so Russia can buy weapons to kick America as a butt. Uh, they'll lend they'll lend America money so they can kick Russia's butt, and uh, they'll be fat and happy uh, uh, living in a deep hole uh, in uh, in Switzerland, uh, where most that's where most of them reside. Um, they'll uh, they'll be in a deep hole in Switzerland, just laughing at both sides. They don't care because whoever wins, uh, uh, they're gonna get they're gonna get paid from both sides. Okay. So, yeah, big big war is great for business. It is for both sides. Anyway, well, Denlev was just talking about CERN and what they're trying to do with CERN. So, um, JP, do you want to come in and comment on any of that? <laughs> right. Okay. Um, regarding uh, well, so again, financial reset. Um, there was a thing about the oil price that dropped last year. Do you guys remember when the oil suddenly dropped 50%? Yeah. 50 bucks a dollar? Mm. Yeah. Sure. This happened through, through something that has just been revealed a couple of days ago. And it's extremely complex. And I don't know if I'll be able to do justice to it exactly, but, um, this is uh, connected with uh, Anonymous, the real Anonymous, not the fake Anonymous that is like, you know, anyway, um, but the real Anonymous and the real uh, Darknet hackers who, you know, essentially are sort of cyber freedom fighters in, in, in your, in, you know. Uh, anyway, so uh, they're all off the grid. They're all completely disappeared. Uh, I don't know if you remember Cliff High talking about people who would drift away. These are the, the, there are forming communities all over the world, just people are disappearing, you know. There's a, there, uh, there is, a, I have been uh, looking at one or two videos where people have gone into certain parks and stuff like that. Now, I don't know whether yeah. that's the same thing, but they've just disappeared. For no, yeah. so no, for no reason, like just gone. Yeah, uh, because, you know, they, they drift away. They're drifting away from society. They're creating a new society by dropping this one completely. Just go, going in two feet. Bye bye. I'm gone. Bye bye. Um, so uh, this is what ha- this is what happened. If I can if I can piece it together uh, briefly, um, there were certain uh, central bankers that were compromised. Um, uh, there was a certain removal of support. Um, from various darker en- en- entities, uh, and that these uh, compromised bankers uh, were made to create an investigation firm, which then uh, uh, Snowden the world. This is, you know, this thing about Edward Snowden is supposed to be a thumb drive. No, it was a terabyte of information. Wow. And it's a terabyte of emails. Okay. Now, if you know that, and if you know about emails, and e- you know an email is like uh, 250 bytes, you know it's nothing. Yeah. Uh, so if you're talking about terabytes of emails, there's a lot of words there, and they're taking a long time to work through it, which is why Snowden is just coming out with bits and bits and bits, you know. But one of the bits they they managed to focus on early was was how uh, the world was controlled, and it was through oil. And it's through the price of oil and the, and this is really good news, by the way. This is really, really, really extremely good news. All right. Because it means the end of fracking. And I'll tell you why. Fracking costs about 60 or it's, it's profit margin starts about $60 a barrel. And, uh, when it was a hundred dollars a barrel, it was worth it. Now, by, uh, eliminating uh, and compromising the people who are keeping the oil price high. This is in the speculation futures market by um, specifically working with those people and deterring them from doing that anymore. They forced the oil price to go down to $50 and stay there. And uh, what that has done is priced fracked oil out of the, bu- out of the market. Well, that's, Which means that's a good the thing. end of it is very very good. Mm. So this is one really really good thing. 
Um, and also $50 oil means that, you know, um, uh, logistics can work. You know, you're not, you're not paying uh, most of your money for things being trucked around. You can truck around for, you know, for reasonable. So do you, do you think the head has been cut off the snake and they're, they're grabbing at straws at the moment? There have been a lot of banker deaths, haven't there? And uh, astronomers, Lots of people yeah. in the investment bank community. And these are the people that were driving the world to down, down to hell. Right. Uh, but all the ones that are dying off are the, are the, are the middle tier guys yeah, who yeah, might these, have led to the top. You know, they, that's uh, right. they, they were the, well, you know, they're, 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 they're taking out the lieutenants and the captains. They ain't taking out none of them colonels and generals. Not yet. Not yet. But that's where you start. You start at their support. You know, what's holding up the generals is the, the information coming from the lieutenants. You, 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 uh, compromise your lieutenant. And, um, anyway, so, uh, they've basically got a, a, a kind of um, plug into the matrix, um, and they're, they're gradually uh, steering it back into a reasonable place. Um, and this is this has only been announced in the last few days, and it's really complex. Uh, I'll let you have the tapes if you like. Um, okay. Well, they're, they're on YouTube. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, one of the things that obviously. So, uh, 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 sorry, Alan, but yeah. there's there's so much other stuff. Um, there's a thing about Putin, yeah, um, and why he signed the BRICS agreement, and that he was um, due to be assassinated, and Obama uh, supposed to be due to be assassinated. Um, and uh, this is this comes from uh, not only a guest, he's and, and you've had him on, I think, uh, Simon Parks. Yeah, yeah, Simon just yeah. came online actually a few minutes ago. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. He has a show on Wall Spirit Radio now, once a month. Oh, excellent. Okay, yeah. In this slot. Yeah. In this slot, seven till uh, uh, seven till nine uh, UK time. Um, so uh, he's bringing a, a lot of new listeners in, and it's great to, and they're very active and very alive and very awake. So he's he's a line in to the um, to uh, what he calls the Illuminati, <laughs> uh, and. Um, He's, he's coming up with some very interesting information. So we'll see if that works out. But basically, um, uh, an extraterrestrial force helped Putin avoid being, um, uh, avoid being assassinated. assassinated. Right. And um, uh, they took him off planet for 10 days, basically. Yeah, that's when he disappeared. Yeah. But then Everybody th was wondering where he was around. And, and why this other guy who... Sort of looks like him, but doesn't say much. <laughs> just yeah, yeah, just yeah. looks tough. Just just, just looks tough there. Yeah, yeah, but everybody could could see this in, in 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 you know with open eyes. Yeah, there was there was a look alike put in. But here's the thing. Um, obviously, Putin has been taken away. I think people are looking at, according to James Corbett, anyway. He says that pe pe people are looking at Putin and China as the saviors, but. You know, in James Corbett's view and the people around James Corbett, he believes that that's just um, they're the other side to the chess game. They're they're controlled like the America Obama and and he, that, that crew is is controlled. I mean, these people at the top, whether you want to call them the Archons or not, they're controlling both sides of the game, and Putin's one side of the game. Anybody want yeah, to jump sure. in? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm absolutely of the same opinion. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll I'll differ on that one. Uh, Putin is uh, is playing the game, but he's a. Uh, I, I think Putin is one of the few out there that is a real, honest to God nationalist. He is a Russian nationalist, and I think he goes along with the game plan as long as it doesn't injure Russia. But I think you'd find Putin step back and he has there's evidence to show that he has pushed back against the powers that should not be uh, a couple of times when it was uh, something that was totally against uh, the national interest of Russia so I I think Russia really is a wild card I think Putin is is a wild card uh, yeah he he's he's in there playing the game he, he knows which side of his bread the butter is on uh, and, and he's going to play the game because he knows people that don't uh, disappear or, 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 you know, fall out of airplanes or the propeller falls off their airplane or whatever. Uh, so, you know, he, he knows bad things happen to people who don't play the game. 
but I think Putin is enough of a nationalist that he might just surprise you. He might just surprise you. And, uh, you know, that, I mean, as, as far as, as World War III goes, um, you know, he's all in favor of kicking NATO's butt. I mean, he'd, he'd love to do it. That is in Russia's interest. I don't think he's quite ready yet. He's still, uh, he's still, oh, 10 years from having his military, um, the, uh, to a point where, uh, they could have a decisive victory. I mean, right now it's, it's, it could go either way. Uh, I mean, really, they, the Russia could maybe beat NATO. Uh, it's possible. Uh, it'd be a tough fight. Uh, I think I think Putin would like to put off World War III until he can be assured a decisive victory. Okay. Now, the other three things that are kind of on the uh, agenda or on on the list coming down the line, and I'm sure you guys have heard about this, is one is this kind of oh we're going to be hit by an asteroid. Then the other one is the financial reset. Well, it's probably more of a devaluation rather than a reset. And then the other one is the, um, so the asteroid, uh, oh, Blue Beam. That's the other one that I was actually sent a, a link over, um, by someone during the week regarding Blue Beam. And it was quite interesting saying that because if the head is being cut off the snake, and they're uh, they're going to do everything they can. They're desperate now at the moment, and they're going to throw everything. Now, obviously, Blue Beam, we know, is going to probably be harp technology, or maybe the asteroid is going to be harp technology if they do that. But as a kind of um, topic of conversation, what have you heard uh, regarding you know these them three issues? So, Detlev, do you want to start? Yeah, thanks. Uh, well, you know, there are uh, lots of informations around, um, you know, concerning the money. Uh, we all know it's a fiat uh, system. So, you know, they can do whatever they want as long as they have enough uh, force and military to support it. So there is not a real value behind the money system. They are collecting and buying, um, you know, valuables uh, like uh, silver and gold in order to hoard this somewhere, you know, to <laughs> store it someplace, uh, for whatever reason, um, to set up a, a, a new currency. I don't know. They want to have a new world order. I mean, this is a one-word government. That's their final goal, isn't it? So they don't really need any, any new uh, currency uh, stuff. They just want to chip us all in the end uh, or, uh, you know, bring us in total dependence um, and then, by the way, eliminate uh, possibly 90% of uh, humans on Earth. So that's the final goal, and anything goes, you know. But they have to be very careful because we humans are waking up through support by, you know, other forces, whatever, uh, or our creator, you know. Um, you never know. I don't know the truth, so I'm still looking for it. But that's... Uh, you know, they, we are their major threat, so they try to, um, you know, be very careful in moving forward. So they cannot just abolish uh, the money system as it is at the moment. They want to get rid of cash. We all know that in Denmark they've just started to try to do that. Uh, you know, because to shops they are uh, claiming that it, they don't need to to accept cash, right? So uh, that's one thing that, it, it, you know, and other little, uh, you know, nations try to do that as well. So I'm not sure whether they really be, will be able to, to change the money system as, as it is because humans are, don't like changes yeah, so yeah. much. Well, we've seen that in Ireland. That's a, they do, they're beginning to do that over here, one or two banks. They don't accept yeah. cash now. But uh, JP, what's your take on it? Well, that's very interesting because I, w I went into my bank yesterday um, to pay my rent and she said, uh, oh, we're going to be closing in September. I said, that's very interesting. Uh, and um, here's, here's another thing, right? Um, this may seem off the wall. This may seem completely crazy, but here's the thing, all right? The, uh, the Illuminati, whenever there is a celebrity death, there's very usually a big kind of game or thing with one of these Madonna type figures doing a big sort of, you know, stuff, doing that, that, that big uh, Illuminati dance thing, uh, ritual idea. And uh, everybody's favorite alien, Robin Williams, died. 
And then 200 days later, because I, I just checked the date, you know, check the date difference. 200 days later came um, Robin Williams. No, um, Leonard Nimoy, another everybody's favorite alien. So <laughs> my prediction is that the next everybody's favorite alien will die on September the 15th, thus kicking off the whole ritual ceremony to uh, culminate on the 18th. Interestingly, my girlfriend's birthday but lots of things happen on the 18th of uh, September. Many things in the past and in, probably in the future will happen on the 18th, 18th of September. So there is this energy going on there. It does seem to be a nexus. Now, Simon Parks, from his friend, he was a member of the uh, Royal... No, um, the Knights Templars. And they said, look, mate, we've got a, a place for you if you want. You know, um, And uh, this was offered to him very recently so from his take they are getting ready to go underground okay this seems to be the thing we okay they're all getting ready to go underground um there is a lot of underground activity including an atlantean uh underground base that still potentially exists and potentially we may actually be in it <laughs> but anyway long story um uh, this is from the remote viewer of uh, Dick Algaier, um who remote viewed that patch underneath the sea by off uh, Portugal, where there's all these lines. Um, that, so that, there's lots of uh, ancient history that is coming up. Um, the return of the gods. Uh, hang on, I, I do know. Uh, anyway, um, but uh, as, it, what, what Simon says, yeah, Simon says, is take some food. Get some storage. Get some rice. Now, I've been, I've been living like this for a long time, um, just to see, right? Buy rice. It's really useful. Get lots of soya sauce. It gives it taste and salt. Lots of salt. Um, and get these basic things. Uh, get borax, um, because that keeps your bones healthy. Um, baking soda, bicarbonate of soda, uh, because you can use it in many things and it removes all sorts of stains. You know, get some really basic chemicals in large quantities household chemicals um, and uh, also uh, things like um, rice and, and uh, pulses and, and uh, flour uh, just just in case you know cans of stuff just buy two cans if you uh, buy what you eat by the way don't oh, yeah. buy what you think you're going to need because you don't eat it eat what you buy and buy, your, buy what you eat and uh, stock up on what you buy and what you eat. And what length of, what length of time are we uh, talking about, JP? Uh, just enough for three or four weeks. Just say, um, just say there was a good force that took over the banks, but that the banks had to close down for four or five weeks to get, you know, to really cleanse it of, of any infiltration. And during that time, we might not be able to trade in money. We may be able to trade in other things, which is another reason that you might want to stock up on sugar, people, because you're addicted to sugar. And until unless you can defeat the addiction to sugar in the next six months, uh, I'd, I'd just buy two more pounds, you know, just just buy another bag um, just to tide you through. And you'll thank me. So you feel that this is coming down the line. Something is coming down the line that I think the end of the road for the cabal. I've, you know, you guys are pretty, have got a pessimistic sort of bent to your ideas. I'm very positive about these things because it's, it's only by being positive that we can defeat them. No, no, it's not, we're not, we're not pessimistic. We're open-minded skeptics. Because, I'll tell you why, because we have had loads and loads of guests on. And the one thing they say is, oh, he's wrong, I'm right, he's wrong, I'm right. So, and as John Irwin always said, if you put the truth in a barrel full of lies, it's very hard to find the truth. So, you can only go by the information and the research that you do. And using, you know, if it's using the discernment and if it resonates with you. Now, I totally agree with you. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And I'm doing my own little store as, it, as Steve is. Just to be on the safe side. If nothing happens, then no big deal. We just use the food. But I'd rather have it just in case. And I don't know. I'm pass this over to Gary. Gary, what's your take on what they're planning, or you know, what's happening there? What's your? Are you uh, on the positive or negative side, or are you stocking up, or what's happening? Well, I'm a, a, 
I've always, you know, I, I, I'm not a Mormon, but I took my cue from the Mormons. Now, the the, the Mormons are are notorious preppers. I mean, as as part of their religious faith, they uh, 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 you will not find a Mormon that doesn't have a pantry that they could survive on for for six months or so. And some of them, you know, four or five years. I mean, that it's part of their, you know, it's part of the one of their religious it's tenets. Their ordination, yes. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, they, yeah, but, you know, I, I listened to the arguments on that, and I said, well, you know, uh, like JP said, I mean, if it's something I'm going to eat anyway, uh, why not have a couple months supply? I, I'm, I'm in a situation where I could, uh, matter of fact, I was talking to my wife about this the, uh, just, just yesterday as we were, we were planting our vegetable garden. Um, you know, I, you know, I, was, I, was, I was, we were, just, we were comparing, we were comparing notes and, we could probably go for oh three months on just the food that we have here in here in the house. Uh, I'll tell you what: the first couple of days we'd uh, we'd eat like kings because we'd have to eat everything in the freezer before we brought it. You know, because these are things that people don't consider when when we talk about an economic collapse, and that's what's coming. You know, whether it's caused by war or or an asteroid clocking us, or uh, little gray anal probing space aliens coming down and zapping us with a blue beam. I mean, it, it, regardless of what pushes the button, uh, you're going to have to be able to live without electricity, without gasoline, without running water, without the McDonald's. Uh, so you know, if 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 you don't you know, if you don't have some toilet paper stashed and and, and and enough of the basics to get you by at least until essential services, you know, food and water uh, are, are restored, uh, you're going to be in a bad way. Uh, you're going to very quickly turn into a, a zombie, and you're going to try to break in my door to take the little bit of stash that I've set aside for me and my family, and you're going to walk away with a butt full of lead, if you're lucky. Yeah, well, there is a, a great documentary on YouTube. I don't know whether you guys have seen it, called Blackout, and it's a it's a National Geographic documentary, and it's the what if scenario, and it's it basically got to do with the power shutting down for ten days, and they give you an example of one the prepper, and then two the couple in the um the the apartment who's given out to the about the maintenance man because there's no electricity, not realizing that there's been a power down or an EMP. Um, issue maybe solar flare and that documentary is very realistic because it it gives you everybody you know from the prepper to the people who aren't prepared and everybody in between and what goes on and as you say gary the first three days the neighbors having a great time they're eating all the food out of the freezer and they're having a great time and a couple of days later they're killing each other for a tin of beans Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's uh, that's kind of what you're going to have to look for. You know, you you, you know, <laughs> um, just just between you and me, I mean, I I I do not consume alcohol. And I, you know, I'm not a I'm not a particularly religious person. Believe me, I smoke tobacco a lot, like like a house fire, but alcohol does not agree with me. But you know, I've got two cases of. Fine, can keep going. Uh, sitting down underneath the stairs, stairwell in my basement, because you know you talk about some absolutely incredible barter potential. Uh, keep in mind, gold is the currency of kings, all freaking debt slaves. I'd like to promote myself to at least free man status. Mm, I think so, debt live. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. Um, we are talking about uh, scenarios like that in quite some time, you know, with the Planet X scenarios and so forth, which has not yet happened, and we never know whether it happens, whether it exists or not. But we have to be prepared, and um, you know, because that is basically part of the consciousness we are building, and um, that's also in our shows or in our, uh, you know, our information we are passing on to the public. Uh, to prepare them for something which is changing life as they know it. Oh, oh. I'm on right. That. So uh, <clears throat> you know that's uh, that's what we uh, are trying 
um, everybody. And um, so I'm prepared, and lots of people I know are prepared, so we can stand uh, something like that. But coming back to your question earlier on, uh, Alan, to Dr. Chapayona, um, I mean, he was actually mentioning that he might be the last person on Earth before everything may disappear. And uh, he gives us hope as well because he says if really uh, this, the, the Earth or the creation, it's not only Earth, it's if the creation was a wrong one, um, that everything which is... Uh, you know, worthwhile taking along will be taken along, <laughs> you know, in order to yeah. place it somewhere else. So basically, we should never be afraid. Yeah. We also should not be afraid of anything happening like we were just talking about, uh, you know, scenarios. Because if you believe in yourself, if you have a certain consciousness, if, if you have a certain frequency reached, which uh, gives you a higher um, wave, you know, <laughs> if you want to a higher frequency, then you shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't be worried uh, at all. Because uh, first of all, you cannot do anything against it, right? You cannot prevent it happening because there are other forces involved. Um, you know, JP mentioned this, and yeah, I mean that's what I believe. I, I believe we have been created, uh, so you know something more intelligent than we can think of uh, most probably was behind all this stuff here. So we shouldn't be worried, but we should prepare. Why not? I mean, it's part of the consciousness. Yeah, I think so. I think it's, there's no harm in actually having about two or three weeks of food and, and other bits and pieces stored and have it there just in case. I do think there is something down the line. Dr. Chip alone, I mightn't agree with all the things, but I do agree with the whole idea of the, the viables um, because what we are seeing is, I mean, if you if you live in a village or a small town, and if if there was a case, as you say, as you said, Detlev, where that you you're vibrating at the at the proper frequency, then you have nothing to worry about. But your neighbour doesn't vibrate at that frequency because they're a psychopath or they're something else. I was, you know, and that you multiply that around the world, then you'd have to say that. Even the catastrophe, like say, I don't know, just say um, an asteroid hits the planet and the coastal rivers flood and there's a little stretch of land left and there's people there. Well, in that group of people that are there, you're going to get the people who are having a high, high vibration and you'll have people who are psychopaths and selfish and only thinking of themselves. So that doesn't really sort the problem out. So there must be something going on on a vibrational level that will only pick up the people who are vibrating on the level that are worthwhile bringing over to the next phase, if that makes sense. JP, that makes sense? Well, you're talking about the sorting of the wheat from the chaff, aren't you, my friend? Really, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, essentially, um, and, and this is the thing, you know, uh, do you support racial purity or do you support integration? And which way do you think nature would go? Well, nature, nature has, you know, you see animals being with other animals. Well, yeah, but zebras stay with zebras and rhinos stay with rhinos. I mean, when uh, racial purity comes in, in many different flavors. I mean, uh, I mean, what, what, are, what are we, are, is, is the, uh, ideal kumbaya planet Earth? Uh, uh, looking like a, a little great anal probing space alien where, where we've all interbred to the point where there are no racial or cultural distinctions. I mean, frankly, viva la difference. Uh, uh, I'm proud to be, uh, of European encourage people, uh, to be proud of what racial characteristics they have and endeavor to, uh, uh, endeavor to, uh, um, to maintain uh, cultural and, and racial identity, I see no, I see no, I see nothing ominous about that. Frankly, I, I think people have a right to be proud of their racial and cultural differences. Exactly, but here's the thing: um, it's whether you regard uh, not. I'm not saying you in in particular or anybody. I'm I'm talking about everybody who might be listening, um, and uh, perhaps other people who are listening in the future. But it's how you regard other species, essentially, whether you regard some species 
as uh, inferior to you, uh, and therefore um, you can eat them, you can Species. hunt them, you can chase about, them. Are we talking you, about you can abuse are we them? About cattle? Are, are we talking about you animals the that only? Are we talking about animals that only exactly. have I'm, a I'm, life because I find them tasty? You'll see, well, I, you see, here's I mean, the frankly, thing. Frankly, uh, do that. Yeah, I mean, I live on a cattle farm. I, you know, I've got, you know, I've got nothing, nothing to say. But I'm talking about the industry of it um, has uh, become tainted with its own. Uh, it's all part of the military, industrial, prison, uh, human trafficking, animal trafficking, uh, abattoir. Um, uh, crematorium. It's, you know, the whole thing about how to deal with dead bodies. It's what I call the death industry. And it runs all the way through the, through to the arms industry because that's what make wars. And it's all un, underwritten by Halliburton and, and, uh, the Dick Cheney and, and his, um, his, his cohorts. And it's, it, that's the, that's what we're all really truly fighting against. Death. Because we believe in life, and um, I think, uh, Gary and uh, JP. So that uh, weird we're talking. It's uh, a I reason think... that I've given up. Sorry, okay. sorry, Detlev. Yeah, Detlev. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I think we are deviating, de- deviating from from the from the yeah, former yeah, yeah, discussion yeah. because we were not talking about humans uh, and animals and so forth. We were talking about frequency. So it doesn't matter whether you are in the form of a dog or of, uh, whatever uh, animal or a living being. Uh, it is a term uh, of frequency that uh, certain um, <clears throat> frequency level, which may be the one uh, you know I don't know yet, yeah, um, that will t- will make it to the next level or will be left out from destruction. That's what uh, Dr. Chapayona said. Yeah, here's the thing. I'm yeah. not talking. I'm not talking about that. This is basically the case. So it doesn't yeah. really matter whether you are black or Indian or, you know, or if you're a dog or a cattle or whatever. It is. A, it's only talking about frequency because we are just looking at us in 3D. Yeah. But we are all frequency. We are not really a human as you look at, at at yourself in the mirror. We are just frequency. All right, so I, I just want to finish the point because it brings it right back to exactly what we're talking about. And the word is compassion. Compassion is the frequency which you need to get through this eye of the needle. Yeah. You come into your heart and you can re- if you come into your heart, you relate to everything. Well, it's yeah, very I, th- difficult I think, I think yeah. Love, love is the frequency. I mean, the, you know, I kind of always say it doesn't matter what the question is, the answer is love because it's that frequency because there's them two emotions, love and fear, which one do you want to experience? And most people want to experience love and that's such a high frequency. And if you, if you compare, I've seen um, a video where they did some kind of DNA testing where they could actually, they could actually test the love frequency compared to the DNA frequency. And the DNA, uh, the frequency for fear which was very, was much faster, where the love frequency which was, was much slower. And the whole idea, I think, of Dr. Chip alone is, you know, the viable, I mean, are you a service to others? Do you get it? Because the three phases are, you're in the matrix, then you wake up to the matrix, and then you realize that your journey is to move away from ego and ignorance and to wisdom and humility and into the love frequency. And the only thing is, is that as a debt level, I would say about Dr. Chip alone is that he's the second person that we've had on the show who, who has said to us, Oh, I'm going to be the last person on the, on the planet be- while everybody else goes. So when I say about, you know, pe- uh, people coming on the show and saying, well, I'm right and I'm right and I'm right. And I did, they email Dr. Chip alone and say, well, we had somebody else who said the same thing. So this way you have to kind of use a little bit of discernment and kind of go sit in the fence and go, okay, well, that's fair enough, you know? Sure. Yeah, I mean, we don't know the truth. I mean, if anybody says he knows the truth, well, I'm uh, I'm happy to learn about it, but there are many truths around, you know. <laughs> well, as you say, there's your truth and my truth and the real truth. So we don't know which one it is, but um, 
Okay, so Gary, just going back to you on the um, on that side. I mean, you're saying you're you're prepped. You have a garden, and you're sorted. JP, you're doing the same thing. Debt level, are you doing the same thing? Sure. I mean, I don't have a garden, but I have uh, stocked up, uh, and I know some farmers. In the meantime, <laughs> close by. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I try to do the same thing. Okay, so do you think what we're going to, just go over to Gary again. Gary, do you think we're going to end up going back into the community? I mean, community, we've lost the whole community thing thanks to technology and our lives getting, you know, so busy and everything else. Busy doing nothing, really. Do you think that we need to go back to community to survive? Well, we're going to have to, but, you know, the, you know, one, one thing that, you know, all everybody who talks about prepping, one thing they always forget about is um, uh, if if there were you know if you if you got stuck on Gilligan's Island uh, and no phones no lights no motor cars not a single luxury what skill could you offer a community to make you personally of such value? that others would gather around to protect you and make sure that, that you know, you had everything you need. Are you a carpenter? Uh, are you a plumber? Uh, can you build a home? Um, in my case, can, can you make a fine whiskey uh, or a decent motor fuel? Um, you know, if you don't have some critical skill, uh, that makes you a person uh, of importance. Keep in mind, you know, the, the, the people that we find important now, you know, the basketball player and the soccer player and so forth, you know, the people that we find important now, uh, they're going to be out of work, okay? They're going to be just be average schmucks like everybody else. And if they don't have something that they can make, do, or, 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 or provide, some service, some skill that they can offer the community, uh, they're going to be pretty low on the on the on the pecking order. So that's that's something that I would encourage anybody who's concerned about such a thing. That that's something I would encourage uh, folks to to take a real hard look at. And if you don't have such a skill, develop it and develop it quickly. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, JP, you said you're you have your own cattle and. You're doing your own... Um... No, 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 I live on a cattle farm. I've got my own chickens, though, and chickens are really good. And uh, another thing is, uh, you're talking about skills. We, uh, in this community, we, we, we do have a, a broad community of um, people in a barter system. And this is one of the ways we're building a community, using the let system, the barter system. Yeah, time banking. Yeah, um, yeah time banking is another another form of it. And um, <laughs> one of my skills is that I created the thing using Microsoft Access as a, as an IT guy. Now, if we have no electricity, I, you know, actually, I think computers are going to keep going. We might, you know, be running on old systems or we might end up using Linux or something like that. But uh, I think that uh, computers are going to keep going and uh, that uh, we're going to find ways of creating electricity uh, that we had no idea that we could, um, and uh, that's what I've been working on. And there, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, we're all working on that as well. We're all working on different forms of energy, and uh, some new forms of energy are just about to come out around the corner. So basically, at the same time the cabal is is falling to pieces, we're also getting these new technologies, and we'll still have a you know a corporate world, but it won't be a dominant corporate world. It'll be a service corporate world. This is the, my, my vision of it anyway. Um, so I'd say do not fear. Stock up with food that you eat and party on. You know, party on. Because I don't think that we're going to have mortgages in 2017. Well, yeah. Really. yeah. Well, there's going to be a, a big change, um, I think, with what's going on in the next few months anyway. I mean, I'm just there with curiosity because of all this talk regarding september i'm just interested now a couple of years ago we had a chap on the on youtube his name was alexander ratrov i don't know whether you guys remember him and he was doing the doom and gloom thing and he said september 26th and um i believe it was probably 2012 september 2012 maybe 2013 
And of course nothing happened. And we've had since then. We've had loads of dates come and go. And um, it's interesting because um, we've we had Alfred Weber on the show as well. And Alfred said that we did have the Nirabu Planet X timeline happening. But he said he feels that there's there was a change. A change took place in 2012 which changed the timeline. Now, I don't know, you know, there's so much information. All these astronomers in that short period of time have been killed, you know, faulty breaks, suicides, all the normal stuff that the elites would do to get rid of people. And um, just Shoot them... themselves twice in the back of the head with a nail gun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> co- common way to commit suicide. Exactly, yeah. And then, obviously, I'd hate to say it because we're all radio hosts, but you had your Jeff Rince, uh, uh attack on uh, his... Uh, they used some kind of energy weapon on Jeff Rince, apparently. Now, Gordon Duff... Apparently, from vet- veterans today, I don't, really, I don't know whether you guys heard this, has been exposed as a shill. And Jim Fetzer and a few of the writers of veterans today have left. Um, Gary, you might have heard about that, oh, since he's over your neck of the woods. Have you heard that? Well, you know, is Gordon Duff a shill? I mean, uh, Gordon, well, he, he was pretty straight up about it all along. I mean, he's, he said all along that 40% of what he puts out there was, was indeed a... Uh, uh, a concoction. I mean, it was his. It was his stage name. Uh, but you know, uh, I, I'm. I, I don't think that scenario has to- the, totally washed yet. Um, you know, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm keeping a, a let's wait and see attitude to, to the Gordon Duff scenario. Uh, bottom line is, Gordon Duff came out with some good information that was spot on. He also came out with a lot of crap. Oh, his name is not Gordon Duff. I forget what his real name is. It doesn't doesn't really matter. Uh, Gordon Duff is the persona that he played on this uh, uh, stage called the Internet. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I can understand him seeking a, a certain amount of anonymity. Uh, as far as uh, the people leaving veterans today, I, I think that's more about uh, um, uh, internal politics, you know, uh, and you get a bunch of high-powered people together in, in the same room, you're going to have a lot of pushing, shoving, and, and disagreeing. And um, I, I think it was more, you know, internal corporate politics at Veterans Today than anything uh, ominous. And, and as far as uh, uh, Jeff Rentz's situation, uh, here again, uh, don't really know for sure. Um, uh, something happened that was unusual. Uh, wish I could Wish I could tell you what it was. Um, he doesn't know for sure that he was hit with some sort of a directed energy weapon. I can tell you that such weapons can be constructed. They can be constructed easily. Um, uh, the um, uh, the radio frequencies that are required are very well known. The, the, the material is published. And I will admit to having constructed such weapons for purpose of area denial myself. They're easily, easily built out of uh, Radio Shack parts. Okay, well that's interesting. We have um, a couple of questions and I'm going to throw them over to um, the people that talked about the subject matter and then if there's a general question I'll put it out to the three of you. Um, Red Leader on the OEM chat wants to know, JP, where did the guest get the info regarding the Bell craft? I um, I have uh, read it out. She can uh, download the book as, as I read it uh, called Die Glocke, um, Die Glocke. Um, it's uh, on www.everbeyondradio.com in the archive section under JP Reads For You, and you can download the whole thing in a zip file and listen to it, uh, and um, it's fascinating. Jim, Jim, I mean, it's, Mars, it's, Jim it's, Mars wrote a really good book on that, too. Uh, yeah, I haven't brother, read that one brother, yet. Brother, Brotherhood of the Bell, it's, uh, uh, it's in my library. It was... Uh, now here again, I'm, you know, I'm not. I'm not sure I buy into uh, the, the the Bell scenario as as it's been represented either. But um, uh, I can tell you that Jim Mars' book uh, made me stop and think about it. It's uh, you know he he presented some very compelling arguments. I, I think his book uh, it's Jim Mars' Brotherhood of the Bell, and I think it's available on Amazon. I, I, and I think it's chump change, like ten fifteen bucks. Okay, well that's that's yeah. good. This, to know. this book, by the way, uh, was uh, Kelsey Bowman wrote it. Uh, and I've not managed to track him down. He's just like, just a, maybe a fictional character. 
Okay. Um, just because it, the in, information was like this guy would have been oh, murdered and his family and everybody because the Nazis are still active. NASA, that's what NASA stands for. Nazis are still active. Nazis, yeah. Or uh, uh, never a straight answer. Right, a couple of comments here from people. Graeme here on the OEM chat said, the benevolent ETs have fixed the collider for good. Red Leader said, according to David Wilcox, September could be the time of alien disclosure. Graham here said, the gates of Hades are about to open and all hell is going to break loose regarding CERN. Red Leader says, CERN is setting muons on the straight path to the Hill of Tara, according to some sources. I've never heard of that, muons. Uh, Jade Helm is a joint psyop. And... um, uh, Joan says that we've all been controlled so long by one side willing to take uh, willing to take a chance uh, obviously he's willing to take the chance on the other side and um, so there's a few let me see if there's any other questions there for you guys on this uh, yeah just people generally talking on the chat and you know everybody has their own opinion as we always say and it's always good to do a bit of research and what resonates with you and, and what works Um I think um, just going back to the CERN thing, as uh, Detlev, you're kind of smack bang in where the CERN is in Switzerland. Um, do you feel that they're not going to power that up? They're not going to get a chance that there, there are forces intervening to stop them from opening uh, and getting there what they what they want from it? Yeah, uh, well, CERN is um, in Geneva, close to Geneva, and Geneva is not far away from here. It's about uh, an hour and a half drive um, from Basel, where I live. So um, we get uh, quite some influence from there, from the um, um, testing uh, what they're doing. You know, I, I talked about this earlier with the headaches and so forth. Um, but, you know, basically they are failing all the time. They have to shut down the operation because of uh, electricity failure or uh, whatever um, they uh, are experiencing. And you remember the, uh, um, the plane which uh, went down um, in March, I guess it was, March, April, in the, Swiss, uh, in the French Alps, which is also not too far away from Geneva. So uh, at that particular day, when they had a, a, a problem at CERN, so whether this is connected or not, I mean, there's no uh, scientific proof. But we also had this uh, extreme flash going around half of the world uh, at this particular day as well. Uh, you know, this um, uh, flash which was tracked down, I, I, I don't remember. I think it, I, it went across, across the whole of the Atlantic. And there are pictures of that, you know. Okay. Taken, uh, taken, and and you can see that. So they are trying to experiment with their um, machine, their <laughs> their collider. But I I think it's someone or something is interfering all the time when they get close to what they are, you know, what their purpose is. Because I don't think that they uh, are able to do or uh, will be able to do what they are planning. Something is interfering. That's what. That's my feeling. And I'm seeing a lot of videos um, showing a lot of sky anomalies. I don't know whether you chaps have seen a lot of these videos, but a lot of people seem to be... There seems to be a, a massive increase in seeing unidentified flying objects. Now, I'm not Can saying there is. Yeah, JP, yeah. yeah. This is really quite important. Um, one of the things that we have become assumed, we assume, hmm, we make assumptions of, is that space is empty. It's far from it. And we're approaching or we're just coming into an area of what me, might be called dirty space. However, a, quote, dirt particle um, could be as big as an aircraft carrier or a small moon. And uh, we're just kind of plowing through this area. The sun is coming through it. Um, and uh, the uh, the issue is whether we're going to survive it, you know, um, on the surface and that's that's why everybody's going underground well d- there's obviously been talk about the elites buying up farms and buying up land and these um silos these ex uh, 1960 nuclear war n- nuclear missile silos being converted into um underground um facilities bunkers for the rich 
um, if you have the money to do it. I mean, if you go on YouTube and have a look, I mean, they're fantastic to what they've done. But again, it's all got to do with money. And a lot of these hedge fund managers, which has been reported, are going off and, and doing this. So I think we're all going to have to keep an, keep an eye on the elites. And when they start disappearing, which apparently some some of them already are, then that's when we'll have to kind of keep an eye on things. Now, you know, well, this is the time we need to keep an eye on things right now. This is it. This, this, is, it. this is the time because if um, you know, again, if it's a case, I don't know whether it's going to be harp or whether it is going to be Planet X. Who knows? But if they're saying, if you go up to Zeta Talk and you know you read Nancy Leader and she has kind of inf- good information there. Again, you sit on the fence, but it's interesting read all the same. And it's not got to do with scaremongering. It's just information. I mean, that's all I see. All this is is just information. Um, if you perceive it as a you know as as a negative, then the best thing is don't read it. Um, don't read negative information if you're going to get scared with it. You know. Um, I just perceive it as information, but as you say, now is the time to be watching the elites because now it's very strange that in September as well, apart from everything else that's going on, the Pope has gone over to America as well at that particular time. And the first thing that came to my mind was, is he gone over there to, because if anything happens, they'll just chuck him in yeah, an underground place. Is, is he gonna, is he gonna tour, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, Cheyenne Mountain, by any chance? Yeah, well, this is it. This is what I'm thinking, Gary. Is it a case that he's over there and, oh, my God, something's happening. You're lucky to be over here. Let's bring you into Cheyenne Mountain. <laughs> hey, yeah, you know, the, the, the doom and gloom, yeah, every once in a while you got to laugh about it. Otherwise, you know, uh, make you cry. But, um, yeah, I, I, could, I could just see the, the Pope, uh, you know, uh, I'm just here to tour America. I'm just here to tour America. How's that the Cheyenne Mountain <laughs> thing coming along? And let's take a look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just convenient that he's over there at the same time. But listen, I, the gas thing is, I know we, we some people might see it as doom and gloom, but I'm quite um, quite optimistic about things. I know that might seem strange to some people with everything going on, but I am kind of very kind of chilled, laid back and optimistic about it. And I'm not kind of too worried about it. And I don't know how you guys feel about it. Let me, let me, let me be the doggy downer here. I mean, because, because, you know, the, the, you know, we, we got to feed, we got to feed the, the other side of this. And, uh, uh, as a student of history, uh, I am not optimistic about near term events. I mean, if we do have a, um, um, a radical change in, society uh something along the lines of the uh failure of the roman empire let's say uh i mean that's that is that's a historical example you can look back in history you can look back at the circumstances that caused rome to fail you can look at at the uh uh at at what happened to the outlying provinces as as rome collapsed uh i mean there are good solid historical records on Rome. Now, to be honest with you, a very similar situation happened when uh, when Greek civilization fell, when the Romans took out the Greeks. Very similar situation uh, befell uh, most of the civilized world when uh, when the Persian Empire uh, failed. And you go back in history and, you know, you, you can see uh, collapses of global societies repeatedly throughout history and historically such an event is something to be considered with uh, serious trepidation uh things are not going to be pleasant for a very long time uh chances are it will be generations generations six eight ten twenty generations uh before we uh, uh before we start Making the slow climb back up. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the those of us who are concerned about this need to do the best we can to preserve the best of what this society produced. Because this this is, in many ways, this has been a a, a really good ride for humanity. This this last you know a couple two three hundred years. It's really, you know, with all the trials and tribulations and all the wars and all the terrible things that have happened, humanity's had a pretty good run for the last couple hundred years. 
And we produced some tremendous things, some marvelous things. How much of that we can tuck away and, and make sure it survives to, to give the next civilization that, that follows behind us uh, kind of a leg up. Maybe we can cut the um, uh, uh, the reconstruction time from a thousand years. Maybe we can cut it down to to two, three, four hundred years. That would be significant. That would be significant. So, do you think there's going to be with this? If this does happen and this change takes place, we're going to be put back to prehistoric times, maybe or not prehistoric times. But, but you know, I, yeah. I, I think you're going you're going to be bound to the land as a serf. Uh, it'll society will uh, uh, will revert to kind of a uh, a form of feudalism. Um, and, I mean, uh, again, uh, all you got to do is read your history. Just read your history, and and just you know, uh, don't think that we're so brilliant and so advanced and so significant because we have cell phones and computers that we're not going to suffer the same fate that people suffered after the collapse of Rome. Uh, you know, I just, you know, I, 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 I hate to be the doom and gloomer, but somebody needs to put it out there. And that, that, that is my opinion. I, I think we're, we're in for a pretty rough road. And you'd say when the next six months to a year? No, 10, 20 years. 10, 20 years? Oh, oh God. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they, this system has been on the verge of collapse for 50 years now. And they've, they've, you know, they'll they just, they'll just keep printing money. It's just numbers in a computer. Uh, they can keep this shell game going for another 10, 20 years. Uh, six months? Nah. You know, I mean, it, it, there, there's always, you know, there's always serious ripples before the big, see, everybody thinks it's going to come in one big boom. You know, there's going to be one big climactic event that says, okay, civilization is now over. Uh, you know, we're into Mad Max. That's it. You know, it's done. No, 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 no. It's going to come in, Little waves, little waves, and and for a lot of people, uh, this civilization has already failed them. Mm. Uh, there, for them, the system has already collapsed. I mean, here here in the United States, there's uh, roughly 90 million people, almost a third of our uh, of our population, who are willing, able, desirous of work, um, and they can't find any. For them. This society has already failed. Uh, the society fails for you when it directly impacts you. Until it smacks you in the back of the head with a two-by-four, everything's fine. Yeah. So the society will fail when it has failed for you. Yeah. And uh, there, there, it'll come in waves over a period of the next 10, 20 years. Which wave is going to knock you out of the boat? Sorry, you know, I don't, you know, my crystal ball is not that good. But as far as, as six months, well, I don't know. Six months from now, you might get knocked out of the boat, and for you, the system has failed. Uh, might be five years from now, you get knocked out of the boat, and the system has failed. Can't really tell you. But one of these waves is going to knock each of us out of the boat. We're all going into the water, whether we like it or not. It just depends on when it hits you. Mm. Yeah, I think the likes of people suffering from, if you look at the likes of Nepal, you know, to them, that's the end of the world, um, basically. So that's the wave, that's the wave hit them. And uh, I suppose we're all on that, uh, in that line of dominoes. It just depends on when the domino is going to hit us. Um, Detlev, what's I, your take on that? I was just going to say, that, oh. um, Alan, that uh, in Nepal, it's the end of the world and it's the beginning of a new one. And that's the way they would see it. It's, yeah, uh, very much that Shiva. Boom. Okay, thank you very much. Interestingly, Shiva is the symbol that is connected with CERN, and that happens uh, at the same time, didn't it? Um, not saying, just saying. Yeah. But there's. I'm looking at the world map of uh, of earthquakes, and uh, every every <laughs> every fault line where there is continental mass. Uh, seems to be uh, flashing and glowing at the moment. Yeah, it's very. And, and so, mm. what to to me, this is the sign that the Earth is expanding, where there's pressure underneath to push outwards, and that's what all these uh, that's what all these earthquakes are saying uh, to me. And the Earth is growing very slowly, uh, very, very, very gradually. Um, 
And it's provable by GPS, by the way. Um, they, found, they found an anomaly. They thought, well, how come the Earth doesn't seem to be where it was? And uh, they discovered that the Earth is growing very, very slowly. You know, it's like two inches in 20 years or something. But um, I will yeah. say, it has been very active, real volcanoes. Yeah. We're seeing and a massive so increase. Th- this is part of the activity. But the, I think, like I said, you know, space is not a constant thing. It's not what we ta- we've been taught it is. It's a very, very fluid thing. And we're flinging our way through it. Um, and uh, something that might like be stay in, in, a, in a stable position and we're in the moving position um, just might happen. You know, if we go through a du- a, what's, you know, a space cloud of space dust, like I said, a dust particle could be bigger than an aircraft carrier. Yeah. OK. Uh, um, sorry, so uh, anyway, but anyway, just 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 to be um, just on, on the bright side of things. Um, if you're in a state of compassion, you're connected with your intuition, your higher self. And um, that's what all the that's what all the teachers have been teaching. That's, you know, forget all about any rules or anything like that. It's all about being in compassion, understanding what compassion is, having yeah. an open heart yeah. and being in love instead of being in fear. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. no, I totally agree with that. Detlef. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, you remember this uh, funny orb or earth uh, or object in the earth in front of the Vatican. Yeah. It shows a huge metal uh, ball, you know, breaking apart. And a small ball is either coming out or um, being uh, moved in. <laughs> I don't know what. Uh, you cannot really make, uh, make this up. Uh, um, it is, uh, they know something. That something is going to happen uh, to the world, but still there's a, there's a something left uh, that's uh, our uncertainty because we don't know the truth. Um, again, um, many things can happen, and uh, I believe that um, it could be a surprise. I'm I'm a little bit of a different opinion than um, Gary, but that's you know everybody uh, should have uh, his own view on it. It could happen uh, overnight. It could happen, uh, you know, uh, like in the Bible, it says, you know, in the last chapter of the New Testament, that it will come like a thief in the night. Um, so it, whether this is true or not, and I'm not a religious person, but, it, um, you know, it, it may be, um, um, you know, also some information which we should consider could happen. So whatever it is, uh, we will be in a bumpy ride, I agree, whether, um, you know, it, it, it is necessarily a bad ride, I don't know, I hope not, because the Bible also says, I mean, just to, to refer to that, that, uh, you know, everybody is going to have the chance to live in a better world or in a better surrounding, and in the end, we are all frequency. Um, so, you know, we should try to get off this three-dimensional thinking. I think, you know, if we just uh, look at us as being a meta, then we are on the wrong track. We are frequency. Yeah, well, that's uh, I kind of always say that we are spiritual beings experiencing life in physical form because that's what we are. And, you know, we need to get past this 3D way of thinking, as you said, Detlev, and look at the bigger picture and understand that we are more... Than, than what we're being told. I mean, the knowledge is power, and they, they've taken the knowledge away from us. We know that, and even the 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 um, uh, the, uh, the people the uh, people finding artifacts, and they if it doesn't kind of kowtow, if it doesn't kind of go with the dogma that's being taught, then obviously they'll get rid of it or they'll hide it because it'll just contradict what we're being told. So um, the archaeologists are just. I'm sure they've come across a lot of stuff. I mean, recently there's an awful lot being come out, especially with the um, um, the Smithsonian Institute saying that he had hidden joint skeletons, and then the skulls being found. And the, and you know we had um, the, that chap on regarding the Star Child, uh, Lloyd Poy. He was on the show, and he was telling us about the Star Child skull that he found. So there it seems to be an awful lot more coming out, which is great from a disclosure point of view. And, um, you know, long may it, may it, you know, carry on. As to when Putin disappeared for them 10 days, we just got a few minutes left there, but when he disappeared for 10 days, apparently there was an, an announcement to the press saying 
don't go home, stay there because Putin has an announcement to make. And people were surmising that he was going to come out and talk about either Planet X or Disclosure, which nothing happened. Um, just quickly, between the three of you, what do you think that was meant to be? Say Gary first. Wow, I you know I I I really I really can't comment on that one. That one that one is just too woo for me. Okay, um, JP. There was a leak, a deliberate leak by the British intelligence services to the Russian intelligence services to say that they had nuclear weapons pointed at Moscow, and um, it, that was seen through by Putin and his crew, and then. That's when he was, uh, he asked for help to leave the planet and, um, and for, for, uh, the rest of that to, uh, by the way, that was just before he left the planet. Right, so okay. I'm going to tell, tell you something, but wait there. Okay, right, yeah. okay. That's so, interesting. So he, basically, he, he, he put a space in there for this whole thing to play out. And, yeah. you know, he actually narrowly avoided, um, falling for that trick. Right. Okay. Well, you know, that's and his, so he really is the. I really believe he is the hero of this moment. Right. Um, well, for preventing us. I mean, we we've we've averted third world war again. It happens almost every week at the <laughs> moment. But you know, he's doing really well. He's he's. Uh, I, I I honor him. Uh, and to be honest, you know, he's I've, better than Cameron. I've I've heard oh. I've heard that um, they tried to they've tried to push him three times and three times he's he's cutting on to it. Okay, I'm just running out of time here. So quickly, uh, Detlev, what's your take on it? Well, I don't think uh, there will be a World War Three. <clears throat> there will be no nuclear war. Uh, even people are discussing whether uh, atomic uh, weapons are feasible. You know, we know the interventions which have taken place earlier, uh, you know, during the Cold uh, War crisis. So I don't think uh, the destruction will be done through humans, uh, if there is any destruction. So, you know, there are other forces who will take care of it or will destroy it yeah. on their means, by their means. Okay, that's brilliant. Okay, well, listen, I'd like to say thanks to uh, Gary and JP and Detlev for coming on to OAM Radio as radio hosts because it's great to share this information. I, I do appreciate you guys coming on. I know you're busy in your own time and it's, uh, it's much appreciated. But let's uh, get all your details there. Detlev, starting off with yourself, how can people find you and uh, if they want to tune in to your radio show? Yeah, thanks. Well, we are building up a TV and video channel as well, um, and that is wakenews.tv. So have a pay, a bit of, pay a visit there, or wakenews.net, and you will also find lots of English information. So you just have to uh, go into a search engine and, uh, and look for it, like a revolution in USA or something, or World War Three or something. Okay. okay. Brilliant. Thanks, Detlev. JP? Uh, www.wolfspiritradio.com and www.everbeyondradio.com Everbeyond is my own personal sort of uh, radio station that plays all me all the time it's really good to still. And, uh, but uh, it's got uh, some really cool products like things made of shungite which help with EMF um, and uh, other sensitivities so uh, do come along and uh, check this stuff, this stuff out um, who else have we got? Yeah, anyway, thank you very much, Alan. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, I've been relaying it to Wolf Spirit, uh, so uh, we will be enjoy enjoying it over here as well. So uh, thanks very much, guys. Uh, lovely to uh, hear you again, Gary and Detlev. And uh, we until we meet again, gentlemen. Okay, just stay there with us there, JP, for a minute. Uh, Gary, um, can you give us your details? Sure. On, on the Internet, my nom de plume is Smart Scarecrow. I'm, I publish on um, on YouTube as Smart Scarecrow. I have a website that's smartscarecrow.com. And um, uh, I do a, a weekly live broadcast uh, every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock in the evening, Eastern U.S. time on the Rents Radio Network. You can catch me there weekly uh, with my live broadcast. Fantastic. Gentlemen, uh, just stay with us there for a minute. Thanks a lot for coming on again. We'll just go to a bit of music and we'll be back after this. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com, UnitedWeStrike.com and PeoplesInternetRadio.com. And we're back. Okay, just a few minutes to go. It's a pity Vinny didn't get on. 
Um, I'll send him an email. He probably was in bed or slept out or just got the time wrong, you know, because he's uh, he is in New Zealand. But we'll aim to do that again because I just had a chat with the guys and we all thought it was a good idea that the radio hosts get together from different parts of the world and have a kind of a, a general global show um, to share the information. So I do think it's important uh, to do that. Right before we go, we've got a couple of minutes left. Just a reminder. Trim Court tomorrow, um, I'm aiming to be down there. Mullingar's covered. Ben Gilroy's going to be in Mullingar. Um, he's going to be um, supporting a lady or uh, somebody there in Mullingar. So that's where Ben's going to be. Also, Cavan, we need people in Cavan as well. And uh, as I say, if you can make it to one of them, please pop down and do that. Tomorrow night, you have Vincent Brown. The People's Debate is in the Hedford Arms in Kells County Mead. It starts at 7 o'clock. If you can get to there, pop down to there as well because, um, you know, you might uh, want to jump in and ask a question or get involved as well. I'm going to aim to be uh, down there as well if I can. Um, a big uh, a big thank you to the guests that came on and uh, hopefully we'll have Steve back next week. As I say, Steve was doing the daddy thing so he wasn't here with us today. I have now four arms instead of two because I'm kind of running everything. So a big thank you for tuning in and uh, listen to Open Your Mind Radio. This is myself, Alan James. Take it easy. Have a safe week. If you have any information, please let us know. We're going to pass over to Vin and I think Vin's going to be doing a video broadcast on People's Internet Radio as far as I know. Take it easy, stay safe, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye bye.